Welcome to episode 54 of Knobcat Games Dungeons of the Obelisk podcast. I'm your host, Joe Sleppy. I'm Executive Prime at Knobcat Games. And this podcast is an audio devlog where we get together every two weeks and we talk about our game, which is Dungeons of the Obelisk, a 2D turn based dungeon crawling loot grinding adventure. And I'm joined today by our digital alchemist, TJ Edisernia. Hello. This podcast is the first official podcast with the test realm live. It's it kind of feels like we've finally done it. After two and a half years, we have something that people are able to play. Yeah, it's nice to finally get it to a point where like other people can actually test it and give feedback on not only the bugs and issues, but their overall opinions on how the game is doing and how it is so far. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of good feedback, a lot of bugs that we found that I didn't find, I guess, that, that other people have found. Oh, yeah, they've, <laughs> the way some of them find bugs is ridiculous, because it's like, you know, you kind of just play the game regularly. You don't play in a way where you're almost looking for bugs. Yeah. Some people will do certain things where it's like, oh, what happens if I mash this button while also doing this button at the same time? <laughs> yeah, that's like a... That's a good one, because they did find that you could, like, double attack, I guess, if you hit two buttons at the same time. <laughs> like, I think it was, like, if you turned auto on while you were hitting a, an attack that, like, selected an enemy, I think is what it was. Yeah, uh, there's a few instances where I think you could do it with potions, too. Like, you could attack and use a potion at the same time. Yeah, there was like, I don't know, it's it's kind of wild because like they really did like put <laughs> put a lot of uh, stress test on the game and uh, we found like so much like weird stuff too, like uh, even like things that I never thought about because like the way it's set up to use potions, you can either auto use a potion or you can pause on low health and you can't do both of those because it wouldn't make any sense you either pause or you use the potion but it is possible that someone would want to not use the potion and not pause the game which i never even thought of <laughs> but like if you had some build i guess where you were continually running like low health and then like healing off of um you know life steal or something then you wouldn't want to use the the potion you want would want to attack to gain your health and stuff so like there, there's just so much like little stuff and yeah, it's like you never really know some of these especially polish features like that just like quality of life for a player you never know what they actually want until people start testing it because you can do it yourself you can think like oh yeah personally i would want to always pause my game if i'm low on health because i would probably want to heal some players just want to wing it and if they die they die or maybe they got something where it's low health is a positive for some reason yeah, I'm sure we'll do like a set or something that's like that someday. The lower lower health, the more damage you do. That's like a pretty like common ability. Such an overpowered ability sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a good one. What was a common one that was popping up a lot? I think there was, you know, there was a lot of chat issues. Remember that people were having issues where it's like legendaries wouldn't always appear in the chat. Yeah. And I don't know if it's fixed because it's really hard to tell with that one. I could never get the error to happen no matter what if i got a legendary the uh, text would say something about it so i've not noticed it not working recently I, I i feel like i was seeing that a little bit at the beginning but i, I think something might have fixed it it's kind of weird because it seems like sometimes things fix themselves or i'm not sure because like the big one that I'm worried about is items disappearing. Yeah. You know, we've had that bug for, for quite a while, and I think we've fixed it, like, well, you've fixed it, like, I don't know, probably at least five different times that we've <laughs> talked about it and and changed it, you know? And it happened to me when I first started playing, and it happened to one other person, but nobody else has reported it happening, and it hasn't happened since. 
So, like, I don't know if it's something that only happens when you have, like, a newer character or if something inadvertently fixed it or, or what. I almost wonder if it's, like, a, a server uh, callback issue because when you get items, you're supposed to, like, tell the server that you got the item. And it tends to be pretty good with it. Like, even if there's ever a rare scenario where you beat something, you get the item, open up the inventory and don't see it. More often than not, it got somewhere tucked away in the server and just loading again tends to just throw it back at you. Yeah. But there's like the rare occasion where maybe you do a call to the server and it fails to do it because, I don't know, an internet issue or some other thing happens and then it just, from there, might disappear. Yeah. Uh, and and I'm test. saying disappear, but actually they, they come back if you like unequip everything. So if you unequip everything and then re-log, they always come back. So... It's like you said, it got tucked away somewhere on the server and it, it's fine, but like it sucks when you like have items and then you log back in and then you've got your like lower level items again. Yeah, it's like a kind of like an unfortunate result of the server because every item sits in this big old inventory page and the only way the game knows if it's equipped or not is a single, I guess, like variable inside of it saying it is equipped. And if two items of the same type, like two helmets, say they're equipped, the game's going to put on one of them while the other one gets tucked away. It still exists, but it wants to equip it, but it can't. So instead of equipping it, it just gets tucked away. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> we can't probably can't diagnose it right now on the podcast, <laughs> but my, my thought is, is there a way to, like, check if two things are equipped and if they are put, like one of them into the inventory and, and uncheck it. I'm starting to think that might actually be a way to do it because the game definitely scans your loot to see if it's equipped in the first place and it'll find if there's another item equipped. So at that point it's just a matter of like taking the two and then putting one of them in your inventory while the other one stays on. Yeah. Do um, items have like a, a date stamp so you can tell which one's the newest? <laughs> uh... They do. Actually, yeah, they do. They got a created time. I can see, like, day, month, year, and exact minute and hour that an item was made. There you go. Then that sounds like if two items get equipped at the same time, unequip the oldest one and put it in your inventory. That Something like that might solve our, that issue from continuing. I don't know. Yeah, I think we'll definitely have to try that one because I feel like that might just completely solve the problem. Especially if these items aren't being lost they're just being you know like hidden from the player but still in the inventory right yeah to the player it looks like they lost their item because it's not equipped anymore and they can't find it in their inventory but uh you know we know it's still hidden there I'm trying to think of what other major bugs we ran into well oh, we have the ghost that that has been following people around in town oh yeah i've been trying to see if i can get that to happen to me because i've seen it before but if I can get it to happen to me, I can see exactly where it triggers and then just add a fix for it. Because I got some like extra precautionary things in the code to reduce how often it happens. But until I personally see at what point in time, it's kind of tough to completely knock it out. Because if that happens, the player really should just attempt to reload instead of just being able to do stuff. Right. Because it's, it's a server element, right? Like it's um, your character, but it's the character that you shouldn't be able to see, right? Yeah, it's it's like a halfway to becoming a full server player. Because um, the object that you see, the like white player guy, is everything about the player. Like you, you got all the default stuff. You got your character skin. You got your, I think it has like a default sword and such. Yeah. It just fails to do the usual update where it says like, oh, this is my armor, this is my character's appearance, this is my character name. So then it just ends up look, kind of looking like a ghost creature that just balls you around. <laughs> Hero Brian. <laughs> it's not a bug, it's a feature. Yeah, we should just rename it and can scare people when they see it. <laughs> if you see the ghost, your inventory will be lost. It'll steal your loot. <laughs> we could just, uh, yeah, we could just make the necromancer in town say something about sometimes he sees ghosts and, and there we go <laughs> it's fixed should get the necromancer to start just resurrecting the ghost instead <laughs> he's not doing his job hmm. can you resurrect a ghost i i feel like the ghost is like the spirit or something so you need the body right to and then you put the ghost back into it 
Is that how necromancy works? Mm, you know, that is a good point. Maybe you can, like, force possession, maybe. Yeah. I think a necromancer finds a dead body and finds a random ghost and just puts them together. Yeah, that's probably how that works. We never did an animation for the necromancer resurrecting the character. He, like, shows up when you die, but you just hit resurrect and nothing happens. You just uh, reappear in town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of forgot about that, because, like, I know he pops up, but I, don't know, I just have it in my head that he pops up, and then he, like, casts a spell, and you see rune or something appear on the ground, and you just stand back up. Yeah, that's, like, basically what me and Nika had talked about a long time ago, was we were going to have an animation for that, and we just, like, never did it. And we got like, I don't know, just kind of low on budget. And we started like hitting priority things instead of, <laughs> you know, just instead of the death screen, I guess. Yeah. And I mean, realistically, the death screen is kind of one of the least important things. Yeah. Like a good uh, amount of players don't really see the death screen. And even then they just kind of go through it. They just want to get out of it and go back to playing. Yeah. I think it's fine. It kind of gives you the vibe that he like shows up. You don't really need the animation like it kind of kind of like explains itself if you talk to him in town he says be careful in the dungeons or you may need my services <laughs> it's like a back burner kind of issue where it'd be cool but far from you know required yeah yeah honestly like the game like is so much like cooler than it needed to be i feel like we did a lot of like polish stuff that we wouldn't have had to have necessarily done <laughs> but it's probably worth it it makes it look really good yeah when you have certain polish elements players definitely notice it with things like I was playing a game earlier today and it's just like the more i play it the more i see a variety of small little polish features that just makes the game look that much better than it would be without them yeah i think we're at a good a good level of polish versus like gameplay versus do you ever play a game dev tycoon I have not. How, you like make a game, but you have like these sliders where you decide how much like gameplay you need, how much like I'm trying to think of what all is on there. Like, I don't know. <laughs> this is something I think about. Like, they'll be like, what type? You, you pick your genre of game and like say it's like an action RPG or something. Then you have to decide how like important uh, gameplay is versus like story versus like other stuff so like in our game we went like light on the story and heavy on like gameplay yeah stuff like that always depends on the game you're going for like i feel like you can always take a backseat on some elements so long as the other elements are up to par relative to the other ones yeah for sure like if the gameplay is really good you can take a step back from a bit of the story yeah i mean that's definitely our i i know some people play games where they like love having a big old long drawn out story like uh, Final Fantasy or something like that but to me like I want to get into the gameplay I want to like I just want to like start grinding in the dungeon and you know so that's kind of like what we did and then this you know we've talked about this on the podcast plenty of times but like the story's all secondary you get it like talking to the people in town or looking at the flavor text or whatever so it's like yeah small bits and pieces kind of like uh, the idea of environmental storytelling where you pick up the story not by people like spoon feeding it to you but by taking in what's going on around you maybe you read like the flavor text of an item or maybe you see what's going on in a certain area and you can just piece together what the story actually is yeah that was definitely my approach I'm trying to think what else we ran into with the test realm being live um, it was kind of cool, like 120 people, I think, signed up for to be in the test realm. Yep. Not that many people actually seem to have jumped on and played yet, but there's still a nice amount of people to be interested in it. Yeah, it's definitely, beta's a, you know, they're always guaranteed to have less players than the actual game, but I feel like, you know, we got a good amount of players to get pulled in for a play test, and those who did join and those who actually have been playing recently, they've been like a huge help on just trying to figure out all the issues that have been going on with it. Yeah, for sure. I know uh, Antimans and uh, Gamer Cat's in there. Uh, Trip did a lot of uh, playing. Pi, that's another one that, that found quite a few bugs. 
Those guys are all very helpful. I know there was a few more that found some stuff, but those were like the big hitter, the heavy hitters. It's like I feel like every time they, uh, I consistently post them about bugs and I try to knock them out and then <laughs> it just keeps getting longer. Yeah, our list is like three times longer than it's ever been before. I'm trying to scroll back through the bugs list and see what other like major ones there were. Oh yeah, I'm looking at one. There was the, the ones with the uh, store page because... I guess apparently if you start clicking the purchase button rapidly, it just crashes Steam, but it doesn't crash the game. Yeah. <laughs> it was it wasn't even that rapidly. It was basically if you double clicked it, it would freeze the game or the Steam, I mean. Is that something on our side or is that a Steam issue? Technically that was our side cuz um so when you click the button, you do get locked out when the Steam store page appears on your screen. But what didn't happen is that it doesn't lock you out fast enough, which is the reason you could double click it in the first place. All right. I added like stuff to it where the very moment you click it, the first thing it does is it locks you out from clicking it again. That's probably the same kind of issue with um, combat and stuff, actually. Like we were talking about earlier, where you could click multiple things at the same time and stuff. They probably weren't locking you out fast enough huh yeah it's a case where like the stuff does lock you out but just not nearly fast enough because typically it's the first thing you do you lock the player out of doing something some of the stuff was like oh very very old stuff which is why i personally never really updated like all those buttons in auto mode existed beforehand so i originally just left it for the longest time yeah nobody <laughs> none of us have gotten in and just like rapidly started clicking stuff and and the way i play i use auto like 99% of the time so like unless I'm pausing to like look at something or go to the shop or something I'm not really I usually just let it play out so I like never see like a lot of those like manual playing bugs I feel like it's one of the biggest problems about when you're a designer for the game instead of a play tester for it because when you're the designer of the game you play it how it's meant to be played you play it how you think you're supposed to play it you don't really play it with the goal of finding how can i break my own game <laughs> yeah like I, I definitely do try to break the game but not not as much like because i know how things are supposed to work so like i do I do run into that issue probably need both you need someone that has the the goal of how things are supposed to work and then someone with the goal of breaking everything and then once they break it then i have to decide how it's supposed to work again you know <laughs> yeah make a big difference on when they play it too because like if you've been playing it for the duration of a whole year just through a variety of play tests there's some old features you might not even think about testing compared to a new player like they'll load on and they'll immediately just go to do whatever they feel like doing like if they want to go to the <laughs> friends list at the start of the game they'll do that if they want to i don't know go to the help page and try to look at the monster index and they might just immediately go for that yeah, I feel like you get in and like everybody in town tells you to go up north and talk to a loon when you first log in, but everything is still available. Like you can go to the shops and your friends list and stuff. There's not like a lot of stuff locked out at the beginning, but I think it's all right that way. I think it's fun to just get in and explore stuff as long as it doesn't break anything. Yeah, that's the, the big thing. Like give the players the option, but if the options start just breaking everything, then you gotta either restrict it or fix it yeah definitely i was seeing earlier about how like even a larger title like a triple a quality game can have errors when you first make an account because uh, the new game that it came out recently held divers 2 had they had the exact same kind of issue that we had before where when you make a fresh account for the first time some things aren't loaded in properly so like in that game if you went to change your armor the moment you load it in it would crash immediately <laughs> and it never happens again it's the first time you make an account if you just tr change your armor at the start it just crashes and it kind of just reminds me of our game where it's like there could be some issues inside where you start the game for the first time and if you try to do something you're not supposed to do at the start it could cause an error but then it's like a one-time error you see it once and you're just never gonna see it ever again <laughs> yeah i like too like how we don't hold the player's hand like if they just decide to pick up the loot chest at the beginning and not equip the items and go into the dungeon like they're welcome to <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I did test a lot of that stuff like you can scrap your starting chest like there's nothing stopping you from like getting those starting items and then just scrapping them <laughs> but the the solution then 
is you can go into a dungeon and just run around an open chest and try to avoid enemies so you can like build back up that way it's kind of a pain but you shouldn't have scrapped your items <laughs> yeah it's like that's on the player at that point yeah sometimes games make it so you can't sell your starting items or like can't scrap them but I don't know. It seems like a pain. Uh, it depends on how they do it, because in our game, since you're allowed to have slots have no items on it, it makes sense that you could just scrap your starter gear, because, you know, if you really want to, I'm, who am I to stop you? Yeah. But there's other games where it's like, once you put on an item on the slot, that slot always has to have something equipped, no matter what. Which, at that point, you know, you obviously can't allow them to destroy the one item they have equipped if it has to have something on it yeah i mean i guess technically someone could just go unequip everything and go to the blacksmith and salvage everything <laughs> and and not have any gear at like level 100 you know <laughs> basically a reset right there i guess they could just start punching gloves <laughs> yeah i guess the good point is if you're paragon 100 and you do that you can go back into level one and just punch gloves with your bare hands probably you can scale yourself back up a bit faster than if you just started at level one <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's all the major um major bugs and issues that we had i can't think of anything else in that respect Oh, I did want to uh, tell you, you and I guess the listeners, I won't, I don't want to say exact numbers and stuff, but we were getting pretty low on our budget. Um, I was sort of wondering what was going to happen <laughs> if we, you know, launched and didn't make any money or whatever, but I actually just filed my tax return yesterday and got a little chunk of money coming. So that should keep us afloat for a couple months, even if nobody buys anything and hopefully it'll give us some time to get a player base built up and have people interested you gotta see what the gamble on release because like worst case scenario you it releases and then we couldn't have a server active <laughs> yeah i don't think the server is gonna be expensive enough that i can't afford that just on my daily you know like personal income or whatever so i'm thinking that 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 should i'm hoping that <laughs> that uh enough people are interested in the game and buy stuff that that we can keep the server live and you know do a few like small updates and stuff um you know have a few things planned for like right after release like a couple artifacts and companions and stuff that ben has already drawn and some things like that that, that should be interesting to people and then um i think we want to hit we want we want to hit some more game modes just to give people more stuff to do in the game so i have a couple ideas for like simple game modes that shouldn't be too hard to implement and then i think the biggest feature that people are going to want is the arsenal, the the multiple loadouts for their character. So I have a I have a document on how I want to do that as well. So that might be our our two main things that we focus on after we release. Yeah, it's definitely not a bad idea. Especially loadouts are big. I feel like anytime I play a game that has different sets of equipment where you might want to swap between them they never have a loadout at the start and it's just so <laughs> annoying to not be able to use it <laughs> yeah i think we'll try to to do that i think it's a feature that that makes sense to unlock when you hit level 10 yeah yeah i can see that because that before that you really don't need it yeah for sure or maybe even like once you paragon a couple times then it unlocks or something and we have a pop-up that tells you about it because right now the breach unlocks when, as soon as you beat level 10 so i'm not sure we'll have to think about when we want that to unlock but we'll have to get it into the game first <laughs> that'll be interesting i think if you can't think of anything else i think i'll wrap this up yeah i think i'm all out <laughs> right on in that case Thank you for listening to the end of this podcast. We really appreciate your interest in our game. Go to knobcat.com, find the link to our Discord, find the link to our Steam page, go wishlist our game, go uh, join the test realm if you want to hunt for bugs and get the uh, the bug hunter cosmetics. We also have our, our social media, which is Instagram and Twitter, which are both at Dungeons Obelisk. And... I also have my Twitch where I try to stream some playtesting every week or so, um, which is twitch.tv slash starrambler. 
And if you're listening to this podcast in a place where you can leave a review or give us five stars, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, it would help other people find our game and let us know that you enjoy the podcast. And I think that's everything. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye. See you.